Hello, everyone. Today it is the start of a, of a new series um, where it's called Mental Health Awakening. And in this series that I am joined with Angela, um, who is, um, does quite a lot of work with mental health herself. And uh, this is going to be quite new for her as well as the guests that uh, come on each day. And yeah, it's going to be a really nice series hearing about different people's mental health. It could be about, someone could be on here about Crohn's. It could be their own experience. It could be their thoughts on it. But uh, but today uh, um, is just an introduction of that. It's going to be not as long as the episodes will be. It's just going to be me and Angela talking to each other about our mental health and what we think the series is going to be like. So Angela, uh, it's, it's great to uh, start this off today. Awesome. It is great to start this off. I'm ready. I'm Angela Jackson. I'm the face of the Jackson Impact Mental Health Solutions. I'm a licensed professional counselor in the state of Tennessee, USA, and I'm so glad to be a part of the series, Mental Health Awakening. Yeah, yeah, because um, if maybe we start off, maybe we should start talking about the, the name, like how, how we um kind of thought of it. It was kind of like, we, we kind of, um we, we guessed a few names, didn't we? And then all that had come up. <laughs> we, did. we did, we did. And, you know, I was thinking about that, about how awakening connects to awareness. It's that um, the process of being more aware, being educated, being knowledgeable, and it it spices it up too, if I can <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just be real about it. You know, the whole awakening that that definitely supports um, awareness. And it's always it's always a good time to talk about mental health as a whole, you know, mental health, mental wellness, mental illness. And sometimes people use them um interchangeably but there are some differences between those and what's so important um, today with the things that are happening in the world whether it be the pandemic whether it be crises things like that having challenging conversations about how it affects the way that you think the way that you behave all those things are important so I think we we came up with a really good name <laughs> Yeah, I think it's great, and like the the like um yeah, I think I think it's a great name because it, it's like I um I think it's good. Like you kind of think of eyes, don't you? Um, when you picture the awakening, or when you're waking up in the morning, or because <laughs> you wake up and, and then it all starts then. But um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's good. It's a good uh, a good start, and like um, for those who who don't know Angela, uh, she was actually uh, part, away from this series. She was, um, she actually came on the podcast, um, I think last year it was, um, and um, like she spoke a bit more about, um, I suppose, her mental health um, there. Um, and I think we touched on Crohn's disease as well, um, because that, that, that series is more about our journeys with Crohn's. And yeah. th this series is more about our journeys with mental health and hearing others as well. Definitely, definitely. When I I share with people about your podcast and your advocacy, that's what I always say is that me and Mason connected because of our journeys with Crohn's. And it, you know, when, when you deal with chronic illness or physical health issues or just day-to-day -day life changes, it does all cycle back around to how it affects your mental health. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um like because this um like today this will be the introduction and then afterwards we will be speaking to other people um with me and Angela um like for example different topics like I think we've got one about money we've got um a dancing one we've got uh people to attend their own experiences so it's going to be quite mixed up so um sometimes a person might come on and say a similar thing to another person but uh, it's good that we're getting lots of different people to come on and uh, tell us about their journeys with mental health. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because, you know, finances and money can, can definitely create some stress, you know. And depending on how the way you handle that or manage it, it 
of course, that applies, you know, to that mental health awakening. Um, you mentioned dance. There, there are ways that dance and physical fitness contribute to um, your overall mental stability. So that's a fit. And there's so many different perspectives. And that's what's great about the people that will be on the podcast is that there are different experiences. It could be um, that they share tips. It could be that they share their personal stories about mental health or even about overcoming some, some challenges. Um, also, um, we've got some professionals, we've got um, mental health professionals, we've got motivational speakers. And again, it's, it's from all different perspectives. So I think we're, we're definitely um, onto a good series. Yeah, because I know we got some from different parts of like, uh, different countries um, as well, w w which is good. Like, um, and um, yeah, um, it, I think I think it's great when you speak to different people from from different countries, hearing about their uh, experiences there, because uh, it's interesting. Because uh, with the countries, as things happen differently, and um, I suppose the support um, people get. Um, and like England and America, for example, I will probably possibly be maybe a more a different support maybe to where, where you are, but um, it, it kind of depends, I think, where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're right. I, I didn't realize it had been a year ago since I was actually on your podcast. <laughs> and we did. We talked a lot about Crohn's. We talked about chronic illness in general. Um, I shared a few, few things about my mental health experience and also um, <clears throat> it's very interesting because <laughs> I had COVID around that time. I think I was just kind of clearing up yeah. from having COVID and same thing. I'm just clearing up from, from having COVID again this year and I tell you, I think about some of the things I said about how I related it to, oh, you know, my, my Crohn's is tougher than dealing with COVID. I don't feel that way this time. <laughs> it was a totally different experience. Um, very, oh my goodness, it's very hard. So it's, it's interesting, uh, the things that take place in our lives from year to year. So I, I definitely was able to kind of uh, point that out. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that is because I remember like you were just, I suppose, clearing up with COVID last time, and then uh, and then we're here now, and um, like I know, yeah, like, in the same situation, I suppose, um, yeah. and like knowing that you can um still catch it, um, like COVID, because um, we've going what what is going with the crisis at the moment in the world is not as talked about as much, is it? Um, like um, really, and like you like yourself and other people is still there still with us um just some people may not think about it as much with what's going on something else that's happened and and stuff but yeah. but yeah it like um how was it for you the second time around was it like any worse for you or was it like a bit similar definitely worse definitely worse i had uh what i considered unusual symptoms and the thing that was most common between the two times was it seemed like I had the burning sensation in my sinus area, in my nose when I would inhale and exhale. So that was the same. But this time I experienced um, burning in my legs. It was like a, a, a kind of a numbing burning sensation in my legs to my back. And then the headache started. And from there, um, of course, the congestion, uh, I feel like it was worse this time. Um, I experienced some swelling and it presented itself like an allergic reaction. So it was definitely different. It has taken me some time to bounce back. You know, I, I, I'm still feeling a bit fatigued. Um, still having some of what I would consider cold-like symptoms, um, but definitely it was different this time. I felt like it was more severe this time around. Yeah, yeah, and like because don't you take um, 
What, what, like, what, what, what's the Crohn's um, medication that you take for your Crohn's? Rimacade. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And isn't that like, like that's pretty um, like high, isn't it? Like um, for you, um, because uh, like um, to dampen your immune system, I mean, like it, that, it dampens it. Yes, um, definitely mm-hmm. suppressed immune system. And I have, I've done pretty good, you know, um, I believe before I was I was um, homeschooling my kids, but now that is not necessarily an option. So I have I've been pretty safe as far as being protected and making sure they wear masks and things of that nature. Um, of course, I know there's always a risk because they're around other people, but I'm. I work from home for the most part, so I'm not really around a lot of people, but this time uh, it it came in and hit hard, I'm telling you. (laughs) Yeah, it only takes that one thing, don't it? Um, To get it, to get it, like, um, I'm I'm fortunate enough to not have it, but, and then you think to yourself, um, like, in the UK now, like, it's not law to do any, there's no restrictions anymore, and you kind of think to yourself, you probably get it in the end <laughs> uh, at some point but it's something that you don't want um but but yeah I suppose I'm quite fortunate that I haven't got it yet but a lot of you taking drugs that suppress the immune system um yeah. so I'm always very yeah. careful about that definitely yeah. mindful of that <laughs> suppressed immune system mm-hmm. yeah yeah like um yeah it's it's, it's difficult when um like over here you kind of feel, I suppose, um, well, many people around the world now probably do, uh, who are vulnerable or take drugs that suppress their immune system and make them like extremely clinically vulnerable as well. Um, and they kind of feel forgotten about from their like top leaders. If 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 it is the same as me, like in the UK, there's no restrictions anymore. Um, mm-hmm. so you kind of get feel forgotten about, and the pandemic kind of forgotten about since um the crisis. Um, around the world well not around the world yet just um where it is at the moment but but uh but yeah it, it is a uh, suppose it's annoying when you do have a a condition that suppresses your immune system which does begin forgot yeah. is forgotten about yeah so with with the restrictions being lifted where you are how has that affected um your mental health and how you um how you live from day to day like I'm like you. I, I I do my I do my things from home quite a lot of the time, um, and I'm okay with that. Like I'm I'm fine with like my own company. I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, but yeah, I suppose um, like with my mental health side of things, it does get quite annoying. Like it goes on. Like life's like gone on. Like um, I suppose pretty much from 2017 when I was diagnosed with my Crohn's and that uh, I suppose fit my mental health then, understanding what it was, and then. For I got a minute. I'm going to have um, the next a, a few years later. I'm okay and I'm doing okay. And then a pandemic happens. And then end of last year we thought we we're going to be okay. And then someone else erupts. And then you think, <laughs> when is any of this going to end? Like, like um, but but yeah, my mental health. Um, like I suppose isolation has been part of it for me. And like. Like staying indoors, not being able to mix of people that I would have liked, because they maybe see other people not as cautious as me, um, which I always am because health is more important than like being maybe going for a party or something. Well, one time off and you're having a good time and then and, and, and then you catch it and then you feel rubbish and you don't know what's going to happen because COVID's odd happens. Some people. Um, get it really bad some people don't fit it at all some people yeah. takes takes time because i don't think it comes into your system straight away um I, like for crohn's though i thought on getting diagnosed it was took a while um i suppose to uh have it maybe have it a while and then get diagnosed at a stage where it got worse yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah definitely and and a part of a part of the fear and hesitancy is just like what you mentioned the result 
of COVID or the way that it manifests in different people, um, you know, it's it it can it can make you fearful because of the fatal result. You know, you 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 just don't know. And sharing my symptoms with other people, it was kind of shocking that I had what I described as those allergic reactions and um, the swelling and the um, welts and you know things of that nature because it sounded odd. It was like, okay, I've, I've heard of um, more respiratory symptoms. And again, like I said, I've even talked with people who have had relatives that passed away as a result of COVID. And so, you know, you, you just don't know. You just mm -hmm. don't know. You don't, do you? And yeah. yeah. You're like, how has um, your mental health been um, like for the, like, I suppose now and like last year and like, how, how, how is it? Well, I can say that for the most part, it has been stable. You know, it has taken those turns where it was rough, um, especially um, being cautious about my health in general, suppressed immune system, keeping up with uh, the medication therapy. Those types of things can be stressful um, for me since I have started working from home. I, it has alleviated a little bit of that, you know, stress um, and the extra precautions. Um, I do things like I always have my fragrances and my candles burning. <laughs> Those things actually kind of help soothe. And as I mentioned before, being in the mental health field and counseling and things of that nature, I have to make sure I do specific things to wind down and take care of, <clears throat> excuse me, my thought processes because I am, <clears throat> excuse me, see, there it goes, it's showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just, just making sure that I am practicing good habits for myself um, because as a mental health professional, hearing different stories, um, helping clients manage their mental health, you've got to create that balance so that it's not a huge stressor um, on yourself. I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping all yeah. the other professionals can agree. So I can say for the most part, um, my mental health has been stable. Um, there have been certain incidences or specific issues that might create some stress and cause me to, you know, stress out and kind of um, have to have to process more in those areas. But for the most part, I have been very comfortable um, being at home. Um, sometimes there's that space where the isolation, you know, I have to um, be mindful as to whether or not um, I'm too isolated. You know, there's a difference between that, you know, having that space. I'm, I'm, I consider myself an introverted person. Yeah. Because of my field and because of things like this, I definitely have to show up and be visible, but I do like time to myself. Not necessarily, you know, alone doesn't necessarily mean lonely. But I do have to be mindful if I'm too withdrawn. You know, is there something that um, is depressing or stressful or that's kind of added to the way that I'm thinking or feeling at that time? So I feel like I do pretty good as far as being mindful and, and doing other things to take those breathers, take those breaks when I need to, um, and actually be honest about how I'm feeling in the moment. So I would say if there's been any specific stressor, it may have been circumstantial. So I just kind of deal with things as they come. Yeah, well, I think that's a good way to be because um, I know I know we can't say I can't worry about stuff because I think yeah. we all do that. And yeah. we're like we're all gonna worry about stuff. And when you tell someone don't worry about something, in their mind they think, um, well, I'm still gonna worry now. <laughs> you just tell me not to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But like, I suppose with anxiety that, probably one of the worst things to say to someone that has anxiety that um, don't worry about it 
<laughs> when yeah. when in someone else's mind they're, they're they're trying to be supportive i suppose and and, and not realizing that probably makes them worse but um yeah yeah like exact like for example if you're like in a in a flare with having crones and like um you feel like the world's ended and kind of a little bit um and and yeah like there's all sort of different things that can be good about mental health or could be bad about it um like um i suppose more now it's talked about i suppose um like with the times we're living in still um i think um i know i know i probably have um probably spoke about a bit more um because it wasn't one of my things that i would always speak about or um really um but but yeah, it's like um, it's good that it's been spoken about, and yeah, I think it was a good idea to create something, a series about it, directly about mental health. Like um, yeah, like um, like a good series talking to different people, um, um, other than you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here yeah. for. The, I'm here for the experience. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I tell, I, I say all the time, um, and, and you know, you brought up a good point because it's hard to tell someone not to worry and that's what their norm has been. <clears throat> so teaching them ways to cope and kind of challenge those anxious thoughts and things like that, I tend to say, um, you know, you don't have to worry about it. It's okay to be concerned, but don't worry about it. <laughs> and that's not okay all the time because, you know, for them, their norm is kind of, you know, those thoughts spinning, those thoughts racing, things of that nature. But, you know, there's a way to cope with that. And um, I mentioned before my, my company, the Jackson Impact. Yeah. What I did was I added to that. So the movement or, um, well, yeah, the movement, uh, when I first created the brand, that was the whole purpose is to normalize conversations about mental health uh, within the community, abroad, within specific populations. And, you know, especially in the Black community, there are certain communities and uh, populations where it's talked about less and less. So that's what I, that was my goal was to normalize the conversation. And then I transitioned into the private practice where it's the Jackson Impact Mental Health Solutions, where I actually see clients for counseling and things of that nature. So I do meet people who um, have severe anxiety and they worry, 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 and that has become their norm. But it's good to know that there are some other things that can help you become more aware of your thought patterns and um, put your finger on the things that you're actually worrying about and kind of separate those and address it issue by issue. So, yeah. Yeah, what do you, um, like, what is it like um, with each client that you have, is it, um, is it just to, is the main goal to help them? Are they, do they get in contact with you or do you get in contact with them? Like, how does that all work? Um, like that, that kind of process? Well, a lot of them, well, definitely they contact me. I am connected and I contract with different agencies or companies. You know, some might be local, others um, may be national. Like, for example, Better Help. You know, I contract with BetterHelp, so they actually send me the clients who are interested or identify a specific um, criteria for what they're looking to resolve. You know, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could be um, chronic illness, it could be grief and loss, you know, things of that nature. So it depends on what a person wants counseling for and what what things are presented. So sometimes they may request services for a specific issue once we start talking other things get uncovered so you yeah. know, I I believe that counseling and therapy it's a good means of self-care you know sometimes people don't necessarily have an immediate challenge 
but they just want to talk with someone kind of as a maintenance self-care type session and, and that's okay yeah i think i think it's good like like um like how long has um the jackson impact um well how long have you been doing this for oh goodness so as far as the jackson impact we're, we're about to celebrate a two-year and a two-year birthday basically <laughs> so the brand has existed, I want to say, four years. I have been, you know, actually becoming more visible and I started the business itself within the last, um, I'm gonna say two to keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it has, I have been in the mental health field 12 years, at least 12 years. Um, and it has been community mental health, it has been, um, <clears throat> substance abuse groups. I've worked with children, adults, families, couples, things of that nature. And as of right now, I, my ideal client, you will know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> my ideal clients are chronic illness patients. I have um, put myself out there as a Crohn's counselor. I put myself out there as a counselor who um, reaches out to, you know, clients or the population of people who have chronic illnesses. And I've gotten quite a mm. bit of referrals in that area. So I'm excited about that to get more clients who, whose life looks like mine, you know? Yeah. So yeah and are all your clients just based in america or are there some in other countries yes they're based in america and because of my license i i can only provide services i can only provide counseling services for people in the state of tennessee it can only be in the state that i'm licensed in so you know maybe in the future i may get licensed in other states or things of that nature um but right now only people in the state of Tennessee. Now I can provide workshops or education um, in America and abroad. You know, I can do things like that, like participating in conferences, sharing mm -hmm. um, information and knowledge on specific topics, but yeah, Tennessee. <laughs> and is that all virtual or is do you go to, do you have appointments where you, before COVID times or, the way we live in now would it be would you see them face to face or would you have an office anything like that right now it's all virtual yeah yeah all telehealth so it's um sometimes it's a platform that's specific for telehealth or teletherapy and also zoom is actually HIPAA compliant. There's other programs or other software that's HIPAA compliant because it has to be private and confidential. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's all virtual right now. Maybe in the future, um, brick and mortar, but <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable providing the telehealth services. And it seems like it's more comfortable for the client because you know, they're in the comfort of their own homes or sometimes their cars. Um, they come for counseling on their lunch breaks. So it's whatever's convenient for them. And that has been a huge factor um, from the perspective of more clients seeking counseling because they can do it on their own time. They can do it in their own space and it's, it's least restrictive. It's more yeah. comfortable for them. So it eases some of that um, anxiety and fear of actually coming for therapy. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to eat when it's online. Because mm -hmm. um, you do get some parts of things that are not, like especially COVID times, um, vulnerable people. So some people having to work because they need the money. Um, and yeah, it's, it's good when you can do your work at home um, because yeah. um, not everyone else is able to. Um, but um, I suppose it's understanding when you have a, a workplace that is 
understanding of your condition if they're saying that you have to go in um, even though you are not very um you don't feel comfortable with that yeah it's good it's always good to do it at, at home where you where you're used to um yeah i think it's, yeah, that's good that's good because um yeah we're good to hear a little bit about the jackson impact mm -hmm. uh, the face of the jackson impact the face of the jackson <laughs> impact <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, like yeah, we spoke. We we spoke quite a lot about our mental health, like on the opening episode, uh, today. Um, so yeah, for the the remainder of the month, or well, most of the the rest of the May now, that uh, you'll be hearing from uh other people. You know, you won't just have to sit uh, listening to me and Angela every week, or or, <laughs> or or every day. Sorry. Um. But, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, th this is the first time Angela uh, was done, wanted to do uh, has done like hosted on here, uh, like That's on a podcast, nice. uh, like before she was uh, a guest, but now she's uh, upgraded herself to a uh, to a host. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, it's going to be fun hearing from other people, all, all different ages. Um, yeah, there might there's a, I think there's going to be some younger ones, uh, some. Uh, similar age of one and, and some older ones um, mm -hmm. um so there's, and there's not going to be no age limit um but uh, but yeah it's going to be it's going to be nice hearing about different people's stories um and each episode is going to focus on their stories so you won't so so now you've heard about mine and Angela's well for everyone who listens quite a lot you will know mine <laughs> um but you can hear Angela's again from her episode from last year as well um, but but yeah, it's a good, a good introduction because I uh, hear about more about the Jackson impact, how Angela has um, fought but COVID again a second time. Uh, yeah. Let's hope Angela the next time, the next episode that um, it's not a third. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> we agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, we were not more than that, would we, Angela? No, we wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want that. We want the series to keep rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the good thing about the series that Angela has helped um, and has helped doing uh, quite a lot around around this series with like with like uh, like flyers, so it's like it's a, it's a social media posts, um, get, getting some guests on as well, um, which we've got a really good group chat going from, from there. And then um, on my side of things, I've got some people as well uh coming on as well so we've kind of teamed up here um and uh, having a good plan about different people uh coming on on, on, on the series which is it's great because being virtual and being audio um which is uh which has been great like 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 so people have the chance to have a, a virtual um a virtual view and an audio view um yeah. so so like if you're if you want to watch it as, as well as audio is good but uh today's episode is both <laughs> um but yeah but yeah like um is there anything else you think we should uh like finish this uh like introduction up with angela uh, one one other thing so a lot of the guests are also going to be featured in a conference in a mental health conference that i'm hosting this month in may and we're, we're just excited because there's so much to be offered. So I'm excited, um, even though um, Mason is in the UK, he will be one of the presenters on the first night of the conference. So we're excited about having representation from the United Kingdom right here in the United States for the Wellness on the River conference. So that is also exciting, kind of, um, you know, I can't really say a pre-conference highlight because we will, you know, the series will extend through the month of May. So, but we're, we're really excited about the involvement and everything that our guests here on the podcast, we're excited about what they have to offer as well as what's to come for the rest of the month. Yeah, yeah, and we're, and we're not going to be having an, the, the only two um, dates that we're not going to be having um, the episodes on um, um, 
will be the 13th of May because that's the conference day that I'm featured on. Um, and we're also not going to be having it on the 19th, which is World IBD Day. So we can have a that's going to be kind of separate from this uh, this series, just having an IBD Day special with um, yeah. with a good guest, which I'm not going to say anything about that yet. But um, you have to wait and see for that one. But but yeah, for, for, for the rest of the days, there will be episodes going out um, for you to listen to. Um, and wherever you are listening, if you're, if you're listening to this in the morning, evening or night time, um, afternoon, um, it will be coming out 6 p.m. UK time um, each day. So uh, depending on where you are, you'll have to um, like, um, yeah, I know Angela's, I think, about five or six hours uh, behind um, like yeah. the, the UK time. So it's more of a lunchtime, I suppose, when it will come out for her. Um, <laughs> and like for me, it's evening. For some people in other countries, it might be more, it might be less. But um, it's a good thing where like, like the time zones and it's going to be interesting to speak to people at different times uh, and different places. Um, so, so yeah, um, we're looking forward to bringing the, the Mental Health Awakening, um, like starting it off. Um, and yeah, it's been to some great people uh, who are, like as Angela says, involved as a conference too. But not all of them are. I, 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 yeah, right. I think, I think um, there are some. Um, I think the group chat are in, the most of them are there. So maybe possibly, I think six or nine are. But, um, but yeah, yeah, you're having a mix of some people from the conference um so if you want to um because i think angela is gonna i think you're gonna record it aren't you like the like the actual that the actual conference so afterwards yeah. maybe have the chance if they're not spit not there or not hosting or not presenting it that they have the chance to have a look uh like afterwards absolutely yes yeah yeah but, but yeah well we're, we're, we'll see you in the next episode and then uh yeah we we'll, we'll hope you enjoyed our introductions of the mental health awakening and yeah, and Angela, if you have any uh, final few words? I'm just excited and excited for everybody to participate and listen in. We've got some great guests. Yeah, yeah, well, well, thank you everyone. And we'll see you uh, next time.